who has one of the memory verses from this past Sunday. Abigail, thank you. The, the Lord enables us to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. He enables us to engage the enemy, to run through a troop and leap over a wall. That sounds like battle, doesn't it? And that strength comes from the Lord. And sometimes we are in the thick of battles as Christians. And the Lord is by our side. He is our champion. Amen? He is our banner going, us, going before us into battle. He is the captain of the Lord's host, isn't he? Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is our, <clears throat> our strength and our song. He has become our salvation. Who has the passage from 2 Timothy? Marianne? Timothy 2, 1-3. Hallelujah. Thank you. We are strong in the grace of God. Our help comes from the Lord. The only strength that we're, we're interested in is the strength that the Lord provides. He is to be our all in all, under all circumstances and at all times. Strong in the grace. We so often refer to grace as a term that can be understood practically as help that comes from the Lord. Sometimes it's wisdom, sometimes it's peace, patience, sometimes it is perseverance, uh, grace. And we are strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. Man at his best is altogether vanity. That's plain, and we ought to uh, be able to come to grips with that. We've tried on our own to do certain things. We fall short. We may uh, at times be able to impress ourselves or a few folks around us with uh, some feeble accomplishments that we've done on our own, but before the Lord and in light of eternity, we can do nothing. Amen? Without him, we can do nothing. Keeping that in the forefront of our minds, we are positioned to approach him for the help that we have need of, to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, that is ours in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Of course, the next verse teaches us to be teachers. Take the things that we've received of the Lord and to share them with others. And from time to time, yep, there's hardness that we have to endure as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Amen? It's a battle to be a Christian. Anybody else with one of the verses from recent weeks that you'd like to share with us? Hallelujah. I'd uh, put in a plug. I only got a handful of, of the, uh, the three by five cards returned on Sunday. Um, bring them on in. They're a blessing to me. And I trust that we'll uh, all be blessed through the, the exercise again this coming month. Amen? Amen? Amen. I wanted to take a few minutes and review some of the ground that we covered on Sunday. We talked of strength to bear up under hardships of any sort. We talked about exercise building strength. Amen? You understand that from a natural, in a natural context. But as we take the word of God and apply it to our hearts and our lives, we grow stronger. We exercise ourselves under godliness. And it's not just a, it's not just a, a, a conformance or a conformity to a law or a legal standard. No, we're bringing under our body. We're presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. We're reigning in our thoughts, bringing thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. Those are, we're triune in nature. We're spirit, soul, and body. Strength originates in God, comes to us in, uh, uh, through the person of the Holy Spirit. But that spirit then works in us, that our minds might, might be renewed and our, and our lives, our character, our, our conduct transformed. Amen? All by the power of the Holy Spirit. In order to experience growth and strength, we need to exercise ourselves. Amen? We talked of the need for disciplines, uh, that, that that the spirit that the Lord has given to us is a spirit of power and of love and of discipline. Christians are not undisciplined. Christians live disciplined lives. You think, well, I'm not a very good Christian. Well, God's working to make us all good Christians, isn't he? Amen. To teach us. He is teaching us to live disciplined lives. And, and there's nobody here that, that loves the Lord that considers discipline a, a bad word. Nope, you might not be very disciplined. But in your heart, there's a longing to be more disciplined, a desire to honor God with a, really with a yieldedness to his spirit. 
We shouldn't be thinking in terms of trying to impress ourselves with how disciplined and orderly and regimented our lives are. No. We should be thinking in terms of just exercising ourselves to always have a conscience void of offense before God and man. Always doing what the Lord would have us do. Amen? That's a disciplined life. A discipline that comes under the, the mastery of the Master, Jesus Christ, our Lord and, and Savior. Amen? A disciplined one who is not one who is, you know, always on schedule, always on this, this uh, regimen. No, a disciplined one is one who takes orders well, does what they're told to do. Amen? Discipline is an integral part of, of building strength growing. And we are to be strong to the end. Amen? A faithful man, who can find? It's not good enough to have started well. You've got to finish well. Those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. We talked a little bit about age-related weakness, didn't we? Outward man perishes, we'll grant that, but the inward man is being renewed day by day. Amen? Yep, inward man is being renewed day by day. And so we, we shouldn't think that we can uh, allow ourselves some so-called liberty to kick back and take it easy. You know, keep running until you drop. Keep fighting until it's all over. Amen? Amen. Fight that good fight of faith until Jesus comes back or until you go the way of the grave. Strong to the end. And <clears throat> don't give in to the... <clears throat> really, it's just the, uh, the perspective of the world, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. It, it, uh, you know, here we live in a, in, a, in a culture, you know, it used to be the, the reason that, um, that we have retirement age set where it is, you know, of 55 plus or 62 or 63, is because people didn't live much longer than that back in the day. And we know the problems that you know, presents with people having enough to retire. But we're not talking about that stuff this evening. We're just talking about how, you know, it wasn't too long ago that people worked until they dropped, right? Yeah, that's the way it was. But he said, you know, we retire at 62 and then people still got a third of their life left to live and retire. Yeah, no, nah. Christians don't think that way. Christians don't think that way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, God is our source of strength. Amen? We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We talked about thinking soberly about who we are and who we are not. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. Amen? And I think that I recognize that I can't on my own, can't do what needs to be done, what God would have me do in my own strength. And that's, there is a weakness to that, isn't there? There is an, an acknowledged inability don't know how to run my business. Don't know how to do the job. Don't know how to be a good husband. Don't know how to be a good wife. Don't know how to be a good dad. Don't know how to be a good mom. Cannot be a good and effective witness. Can't stay on my face in prayer for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Without him, I can do nothing. I'm weak. I'm weak. I get distracted too easily. I'm lazy. I'm, uh, I give place to lust. I, and that's not... That's not encouraging weakness in it. No, that's just an acknowledgement of who we are not. Amen? Thinking soberly so that we might draw on his strength. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. <clears throat> strength from weakness. And... Yeah, that was about it. So you can <clears throat> turn through your Bibles to Luke chapter 24 this evening. And while you're doing so, I'm going to share again 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13, which says, Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. <clears throat> King James says, Quit you like men or act like men. Amen. Strength is a manly quality. It's a godly quality. <clears throat> and we want to take a little bit more time and talk about God as our source. 
and spend a few minutes talking about the ministry that the Holy Spirit has for us, his work in our lives. In Luke 24, verse 20, 49 says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in, Jerusalem, in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Well, we've talked about <clears throat> being strong in character-related issues, that we might persevere, that we might, uh, that we might fulfill God's general call, plan, purpose for our lives. But in order to do so, we need power from on high. We're, we're thankful that God gives us the grace to get up out of bed in the morning, spend some time with him in prayer, live a separated life, that we would be able to turn our, 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 our eyes away from the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. We'd be able to turn from those and, and, to, and to live a, a godly life. We're thankful for that. But in order to really be uh, about the work of advancing the kingdom of God, we really need the ministry of the Holy Spirit, don't we? Because we will be pressed. And it's not just when it comes to evangelistic outreach. No, we, we need the power of the Holy Spirit day in, day out. And Jesus says that we are to be endued with power from on high. That's the promise of the Father, he says. He says, it's expedient that I go, for, go, go from you, that I ascend. Because if I don't, then the Holy Spirit isn't sent. But if I go, I'll send another one like myself. He's been with you. He shall be in you. And you know that X <clears throat> says that you'll receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes, comes upon you. And I don't know that there's anybody here this evening that, that um, has not understood that that is an act of receiving. We've talked about that plenty of times, haven't we? If you want to receive power, then you do so actively. It's not just passive where we sit around and wait to absorb some. And, you know, neither is it uh, seizing power, wrestling power uh, from God as though he were uh, reluctant to give it. But he offers it to us. And you face life. And you face trials and struggles or battles or, yeah, you're engaging the enemy or contending with sin in your members. And you go to God in faith asking him for the power of the Holy Spirit. And you receive that power by faith. And that doesn't mean you receive goosebumps and tingly feelings and that, that uh, like, just like a, a, a liquid heat flowing through your veins or whatever other people use to describe these sensations that they have experienced or heard other people experience. God's a spirit and so are you. Amen? And in spirit, you receive power actively. Reach out and take it. We've used the illustration plenty of times, haven't we? It's offered. And in order to partake of it, you've got to reach out and receive it to yourself, don't you? And that's the way we should see, see it. God's, in, with the eye of faith, see God offering to you help that you might stand strong, that you might love more selflessly, that you might serve him more diligently and consistently and reach, just see yourself in that same realm of the spirit, reaching out and taking that to yourself because it's yours, that you might be endued with power from on high. Christians are not weak. Christians are not feeble. Christians are not, are not people that, that should have to always be, uh, be getting up from the most recent fall. They may fall from time to time. But the path of the just is, is an upright path, isn't it? It's an upward path. It's like the dawning of the day getting brighter and brighter. That just speaks, you know, to me of like stronger and brighter and clearer and getting better at, at fighting the fight. And maybe it's, a, it's a, 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 a more difficult fight tomorrow, but I've got more strength tomorrow than I had yesterday. Christians are getting stronger. 
endued with power. And it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Have you been filled? Do you stay filled? Do you look to the Lord for refillings? Praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit is a good way to build yourself up. Edify. Edify is to build up. That, that's making stronger. Praying in the Spirit. Endued with power from on high. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Amen? Uh, let's talk about strength for fighting. Christians fight. Christians are fighters. We're warriors. I mean, we, we quote the passage there from 2 Timothy 2. No man that wars. No man that has been enlisted in the service of his master as a warrior gets entangled with the affairs of this life, does he? We're to fight the good fight of faith. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course, kept the faith. Christians are fighters. And if you're going to fight, you ought to have strength to fight. Amen? And we fight to win. You're not going, we're not going in this thing to get beat up. We're to be strong. We're to do exploits. I'm going to take you back over to Psalm 18. Just below the memory verse. <clears throat> Look at me to verse 31. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon high places. He teaches my hands to war so that a, a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. God strengthens us for fighting. For fighting. Do you think Jesus was aware of the battle that takes place in the heavenlies? Do you think Jesus was aware of the, the foe, the enemy? The devil, he came to destroy the works of the devil. The Bible speaks of him spoiling principalities and powers, triumphing over, him, over them in it. That sounds like warfare, doesn't it? That sounds like battle, doesn't it? And Christians are strong to fight. We're fighters. We've... We face opposition. We, we recognize there's, there's opposition. And we resist the devil. Amen? We, we resist the, the sin that's in our members and its influence over us. We, we stand strong against everything from, from uh, false doctrine to ungodly influences to evil tendencies. And that's a fight. The uphill battle, isn't it? Yeah. We're going against the prevailing tide, the current of our culture. And that's a fight. And the devil is out there as a formidable foe. And Christians are fighters. And the Lord girds us with strength. He teaches our hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by our arms. Strong in the power of his might to fight. Not just for, not just for flexing in front of the mirror. It's fighting strength. It's strong to, to fight. Look at me over to Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4. Of course, in the early chapters of the book of Nehemiah, they're rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem. They've been uh, granted permission to return and they've been given letters <clears throat> that they might uh, get timber for the, the gates and the bars and that they might be, they have authorization from the uh, <clears throat> emperor to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. 
But they run into some opposition, don't they? And Nehemiah instructs them to take up arms while they're building. And I, I want us to look to verses 13 and 14 of chapter 4. <clears throat> this is Nehemiah speaking. Therefore, I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings. And they set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And they looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, your houses. They're trying to, they're trying to rebuild for themselves and get reestablished in the land that God had promised them. And they've been, they've been carried off captive now for 70 plus years at this point, right? And they've been granted permission to return and to rebuild their city, but there's opposition there and they're fighting. And we were talking the other day, sure, does Nehemiah talk to these guys who are rebuilding the wall? And are they going to have to physically fight, perhaps? As it turns out, the, 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 it was known... Uh, it became known to their, their enemies that the Jews got word that they were going to be attacked and had armed themselves, and so the enemies don't attack, right? But there's a message here for us to fight. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, your houses. I don't know of, of any uh, more effective way of fighting for your brethren, for your sons, your daughters, your wives, your, 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 the people of God, than by being committed, steadfast, consistent yourself. What potential there is for discouraging the hearts of those around you if you cave in, quit, lose heart, turn tail, and run. But when we stand strong, when we continue to fight, then we're an encouragement to those around us to do the same, aren't we? Fight. We are members of a body. Members of the body of Christ universal and God in his infinite wisdom and in his goodness he has made us a part of one another's lives. And when each day you purpose to honor God with your all with a consecration of your all to Jesus fight the good fight of faith yeah it's not just so that you make it so you keep your head above water those that are those around you you know benefit and are blessed by your resolve, by the grace and, uh, of, of your God upon you. Your willingness and determination before the Lord to endure to the end, to continue to fight. There's this, there's this shared, you know, albeit often unspoken awareness that we're committed to one another. We're there for one another. We're pulling for one another. On Sunday evening, uh, Marianne and I uh, uh, <clears throat> just flipped on the television for a few minutes. And of course, it's, it was Memorial Day weekend. And we were watching this, this uh, one little show where they were interviewing some <clears throat> uh, uh, men that had been Navy SEALs. And they were talking about some, you know, just some operations that they had done. And it was interesting to note, you know, as they were talking of the of, of operations and when it just you're you're there. I mean, the door of the helicopter opens and you're about to jump on out and how they spoke of of fighting for one another. That was that it just came on out. I'm fighting for my brothers. I'm there for my brothers. It wasn't, you know, at that moment for their country and for this cause. 
they were there mindful of their brothers, making sure they got one another's back. Well, we know that all that we do is done is unto the Lord. But in, in God's purpose, we are our brother's keeper. We're, we're to be there. And there is a, a weighty responsibility that we have as we stand before God Almighty to make sure that our brothers finish the race as well. There's something cold and callous about one who is only concerned about their own skin to the neglect, to the disregard of their brothers and sisters. But a Christian moving in the love of Jesus Christ knows that they're not only fighting for themselves, but they're fighting for their, their brothers and their sons and their daughters and their wives. Amen? Amen? We are to fight. And you purpose to honor God each day because you know that other people are dependent on you. They're counting on you. Oh, they don't necessarily call you up and sh or shoot you a text message or let you know on social media that they're counting on you today. But they're counting on you. And we're not, we're not going to discourage the hearts of our brothers and sisters by caving in and quitting. Amen? We're going to continue to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren your sons, your daughters, your wives, your houses. There is certainly a common cause. There is a <clears throat> common enemy and there is a mighty God. Amen? Look with me over to Jeremiah chapter 12. Jeremiah, well, let's just drop in on that verse over there in Jeremiah chapter 12 that we make reference to from time to time. Verse 5 of Jeremiah 12, If you have run with the footmen, and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, <clears throat> in which you trusted they wearied you, <clears throat> then how will you do in the floodplain of the Jordan? It's a battle. And it may feel like it's an intense battle that you're fighting right now. No? Yeah it may well get a lot worse. And there will be always grace. The Lord never allows us to be tried above our ability, does he? No. He will always make the way of escape. His grace will always be sufficient if we will draw on that grace in faith. Amen? To fight. And we should... We should not uh, make more of our, our trials or our battles than, uh, than, than they are. Again, just sober thinking. It may feel like you're being pressed uh, above measure, but with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen? So keep, keep in the fight. <clears throat> Look with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6. It's down in verse 12 <clears throat> that the scripture says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. The, the, the fight of faith and faithfulness toward God, well, the, the walk of faith is a fight. Amen? To continue to move in faith toward God Almighty, yep, it's a fight. You've got to deal with with doubts and fears and opposition and persecution, uh, just, just hardness. It's a fight, isn't it? But I wanted to take a look at this verse in the close context of some of the things that the apostle speaks to immediately prior to this verse. Go with me up to verse 6 of chapter 6, where he speaks, Godliness with contentment is great gain. We brought nothing into this world. It's certain we can carry nothing out. And he's talking about how we have to contend with uh, keeping our affections set on the things that are above and not getting too caught up with the material. 
That's a battle. And uh, Paul speaks these words to uh, his son in the faith, Timothy, and first century. We're 21st century, prosperous, just ridiculously, unprecedentedly prosperous nation and society. And we've talked about before, you know, uh, cross country. You live in a very wealthy area, very wealthy area. Globally, United States, hands down, most prosperous, right? I mean, we got millions and tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people living in a standard living that is way above average globally. And then in that, you come into this area, this area around our nation's capital, you know, close to the printing presses. Yeah. We're well off. We're well off. And it's a battle to be content with such things as you have. And to remember that godliness with contentment is great gain. That's a fight, isn't it? Yeah. He says, fight the good fight of faith. And this is the, these are the things that he's talking about. Having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Hmm? Well, yeah, that's, I mean, food and raiment, there, therewith be content. But it would be nice to have a little bit more. A little bit bigger, a little bit better, a little bit newer, a little bit nicer. And on and on we go, and, and we need to be careful. Amen? We, not, we, we, we cannot get entangled with the affairs of this life, the things of this world. The love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they've erred from the faith, pierced themselves through with many sorrows, and he says, thou, O man of God, what? Flee these things. Flee these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Well, and then he says, fight the good fight of faith. And we should understand that in part, that fight of faith will involve a fight against materialism. Being content with what we have. That a, a confidence that God will supply all our need, not all our lust. Amen? That's a fight. That's a fight of faith. And you know, this, this, uh, this Greek word, it's the word from which, this fight, it's the Greek word from which we get our word, English word, agony. Agonizomai. And it is a struggle to be content and to seek first the kingdom of God. Amen? And to think with a confidence that the things you have need of will be added to you. <clears throat> Let's talk about strength for standing. Of course, we've already looked at the Ephesians 6 passage, and I'll, I'll mention it briefly. You don't need to turn there, but <clears throat> I just... In Ephesians 6, 10, and 11, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be, able, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Just stand strong. We shouldn't be a people that are, that are wavering and faltering. Christians are able to stand strong. They're able to bear up under trials, aren't they? They're not blown about by every wind of doctrine. They're not... Uh, they're not <clears throat> Uh, well, like the, um, like the psalmist writes, writes, why be downcast, O my soul? Christians uh, can bear up under some hardness, can't they? Some bad news, some setbacks. Just because uh, you're, uh, you're, you're uh, up against some opposition doesn't mean that you have to cave in. No, you can stand. And the enemy's pushing hard against you, and you can stand. Can't you? The Christian has strength to stand in the, in the thick of the storm, don't they? That's the strength that the Lord gives us for, for standing, to be able to, yeah, like we've already said about being able to stay the course and continue to be faithful. <clears throat> Look with me to 1 Corinthians 15.
Verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as, ye, as much as ye know, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be steadfast. Be strong to be unmovable. You don't allow the the things that, that come your way to take you off course. You keep standing, solid, steady, steadfast, unmovable. Strength to keep standing. Look with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. Here we see this strength to stand presented in a, a, a little bit different <clears throat> manner. Strength to stand. We read from verse 46 of Luke 6. He says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Well, we need to be strong like this, don't we? Yeah through obedience, through hearing what God has to say and doing it. That's, again, another, that's a prescription for strength building, isn't it? The storms come. You know how he goes on. We'll read it in a moment. But you've got the guy who didn't dig deep, who wasn't a doer of the word. To both people, the storms came and beat vehemently, violently, didn't they? Yeah. That's life on earth. Difficulties, hardships come, trials come, opposition comes. And when you're a doer of the word, not just to hear, but whosoever cometh to me and heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I'll show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Strength to stand. He that heareth and doeth not. Heareth and doeth not. So somebody's hearing the word of God. How did they hear it? They probably went to church, didn't they? They probably went to church and read their Bible, didn't they? Yeah. But hearing and not doing, that, that house is coming down. Like a man without a foundation. <coughs> Built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. And we'd sit here tonight and say, hmm, I know people like that. And sometimes we, we think of them and, and we see things that, that don't look good. We, we speak to them. We're trusting in God to do his work in their lives. Uh, but you can't do somebody else's obeying for him, can you? You speak into their lives. You encourage them. You admonish them. You maybe reprove and rebuke them. You pray for them and... But you see, they're just not doing the word. And yep, the stream comes, beats against that house, and it comes down, doesn't it? Just like the Bible said it would. We're to be strong to stand. And if we're going to stand, when the storm comes, then we need to be doers of the word. Hearers 
and doers. Amen? Go with me over to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. We'll jump in at verse 18. It's where the apostle is talking of Abraham and his faith. Abraham, against hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. So God had promised him. We know Abraham's story. God had promised him an heir and that the Lord would make of Abraham a great nation. And through him would provide a redeemer. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He was, he was a man strong in faith, wasn't he? He was not weak in faith. He was strong in faith. He believed that the word of God was more sure than what he perceived with his eyes or with his senses. He considered, and that's, that's the kind of strength that God commends and wants to work into all of us, isn't it? That we would be able to look past the things which are seen and see the things which are not seen with the eye of faith. Being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body now dead. Well, that takes faith to do that to look past the symptoms, to look past the, 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 those things which are evident. He did not consider those things. He could have seen them, could have pondered them, could have thought about them, and could have concluded that there's no hope. Because I'm too old. Sarah's too old. Even when she was a young woman, she, her, her womb was stopped up. Now it's too late. He could have considered those things. But strong faith doesn't consider those things. Doesn't look at the circumstances or the symptoms. Strong faith looks to the word of God. Strong faith looks to the promise of God. Strong faith declares what God has said. Amen? He didn't consider that he was 100 years old. Was he? If you had asked him how old he was, would he have told you? If he had asked you how, how many kids he had, would he have told you? Sure, he would have told you. He wasn't, he wasn't denying that reality. He just looked to a higher reality, didn't he? God said, he's going to make me a father or a prince of nations. He has told me that in my seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. He has told me that my offspring will be as the sand of the sea innumerable, as the stars of the sky innumerable. That's what God has said. That's what I'm looking to. He was strong in faith. And he's called the father of faith. And we're, we are to consider ourselves his offspring and move in this kind of faith, like our father Abraham moved in. Amen? And consider that the words of this book are more sure and true than what we could perceive with our eyes or hear with our ears or touch with our hands. That's what Abraham did, isn't it? He did not consider his dead body. He said, okay, uh, I, 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 he could have. He could have thought about it. Some of the translations say that he, he did consider it, but he just considered the word of God more true. Right? Right? And that's, that's why he was made the father of many nations. Because he took God at his word. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Strong in faith. Let us be a people strong in faith. Who take the word of God... And say, that's what God said. And he's not a respecter of persons. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm standing on these promises that I believe are mine. 
and hold fast to a profession of faith without wavering, be strong. Don't look at the, 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 the things that are seen. Look past those to the eternal truths of his word. That's the kind of faith that God is looking for, the kind of faith that he commends, encourages. Amen? He wants us to be strong as men and women of God, strong in faith, taking him at his word, having his word hidden in our heart, having his word upon our lips, our, our profession. Hold fast to a profession of faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised. Do you believe that? Then you're going to say what he says. You know, you know that, that confession or profession is that, don't you? It's saying the same as, it's, this, it's, it's homologia. Same word. That's what a profession is. The same word that God says is the same word that we say. Amen? Amen. Hold fast to a profession of faith. Be strong in faith. <clears throat> Look at me over to 2 Chronicles 16. I just want to remind everybody that God is, is looking for strength. In 2 Chronicles 16, you know that uh, from, your, from your reading, time in the Bible, that Asa, a, a good king over Judah, had some, some uh, had a, early in his life, he had some good testimonies, didn't he? Of trusting God, seeing the enemies of God beaten back. Good man. Uh, didn't finish well. Late in life, the, uh, the northern kingdom, Judah's southern kingdom, Israel's northern kingdom, right? Yep. Well, Israel was coming against Judah. Ace is the king of Judah. And earlier, he had already seen a mighty victory, supernatural mighty victory over, uh, over foreign enemies that were attacking. Now the Israelites are attacking the southern kingdom, Judah. Asa is the king. And you know what Asa does? Well, in this place, he hires Syrians to fight his battle against the Israelites. And, and a bad move. And the seer comes along, the prophet comes along, and, and tells them that you shouldn't have done that. And, and Asa isn't repentant. The reason we go here is it's just a beautiful passage. We, love, we all love it. He says in verse 9 that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. God wants to show himself strong on the behalf of his people. He does. He's looking for people who will who are willing to be strong in the Lord, who are willing to be strong in faith, who want to be used by God, want to be a part of God's plan. God is looking for those kinds of people. Do you read this verse and have your heart excited? Is your heart stirred when you, you read this and think, man, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him? You think, man, I want to be that man. Be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. Amen? Be strong in faith. Love the Lord and allow the Lord. He's looking for people that he might show himself strong in them and through them and on their behalf. God wants us and expects us to want him. He does. He's ready to pour out blessing that we can't begin to contain. And you know, when you think of blessing, think of God getting himself glory as he is doing his will through a yielded vessel. You know, maybe like an Apostle Paul or an Apostle Peter. Were they the wealthiest people? Hmm? They sure got something done for the kingdom, didn't they? They did. They were used of the Lord mightily, weren't they? Because they loved the Lord. And as God looked, 
He said, I can use that one. They're yielded to me. Their heart's upright before me. Their heart toward me is loyal. They love me. They consider their life to belong to me. God's looking for such a one, isn't he? He wants to show himself strong on our behalf. Do you want to be strong for Jesus? For the advancement of his kingdom? Do you want to be strong that you could be a benefit and a blessing to your brothers and sisters, to your families, to a lost and dying world? What a messed up world it is. And we cannot just withdraw and say, oh, hope Jesus comes back soon because it is sure a nasty world out there. Get on out there and do something in the strength of the Lord. Amen? Amen. He's looking because he desires to show himself strong. He desires to pour out of his spirit and fill a yielded vessel, a broken vessel. Amen? Let's trust him for that grace. Let's bow our heads before him. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we do look to you, O Lord. We pray and trust, O Father God, that we would acknowledge our utter dependence upon you. Without you, we can do nothing. Lord, help us to go beyond an awareness and acknowledgement of, of weakness and failure and see promises and see spiritual provision for strength and victory and call out to you in faith from humble hearts, from broken hearts, that you'd fill us, empower us by your spirit to be strong, to do exploits, to run through a troop, to leap over a wall, to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Heavenly Father, Holy Lord, we want to be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. To fulfill your plan and purpose for our lives. We like the idea of strength, O oh Lord God. Strong before you. Strong in the power of your might. Sin not having dominion. Bold as a lion because we know the, we're the righteousness of God and Jesus Christ. We're warriors. Clad in the armor of God and skillfully wielding the sword of the spirit. Those truths excite our hearts, Lord God. Continue your good work, O oh Lord God. Help us to be strong. To act like men. To be strong for your glory, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, greet one another in the love of the Lord Jesus. God's grace and peace go with you all. <laughs>